Hi, thank you for joining us today. We have got a great topic and a great panel to share it with. But before we get started, let's open in prayer. I invite you to sit back and close your eyes and join us. Great Spirit, Father, Mother, God, all that is. We rejoice in this opportunity to grow and share and learn. God, we thank you for this time that we have together, knowing that our words, our thoughts are taken into anyone and everyone who would benefit from them, including ourselves. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Okay, we've talked about this book before. It's called Effectual Prayer by Francis Folks. Now, you may remember that Francis Folks was ordained in 1923. Wow. Um, like 100 years ago. Um, and she is the author who put together Myrtle Fillmore's writings into um, Myrtle Fillmore's healing letters. So she's grounded in unity. She's she's really has an amazing story, an amazing history. And she's a part of the unity movement from almost the very beginning. So today in this book, Effectual Prayer, we are going to look at, and I'm going to read to you, um, the beginning of the chapter, Meditations for the High Watch. The secret of health is pure and harmonious thought. The secret of happiness is in the finding of the kingdom within, of heaven within. The secret of success and prosperity is in absolute trust in the giver of gifts. The secret of manifestation of all the good we need and desire is in the high watch. The lifted vision. Our vision can be lifted from the sword, the low, from sickness and poverty and the many forms of error that seek to hold it down by being filled with the high and holy thoughts and by holding and by our holding fast to these until the eye becomes swift and single to the good only. Error thoughts are continually seeking entrance into the mind. They are suggested by people and conditions about us. They spring out of subconscious doubts and fears, hatreds and jealousies, poverty and failure, all of which we have stored away, some through the ages. They come from the race consciousness, the combined thoughts of all people. This is indeed a formidable array of error causes, and it can be handled by no man alone, for it's subject only to the Christ. Error and its results are continuous in the life of everyone until he comes to the point in development where he is willing to redeem and build anew. Okay, I'm going to stop there. But throughout the chapter, she talks about the idea that our error thoughts and our error thinking is not something we should beat ourselves up for. It is not a lack in ourselves. It's all around us. And it's only natural that these thoughts bubble up through us. It's what we do with these thoughts that help us to keep the high watch. It's our ability to see beyond these error thoughts into the larger picture, the bigger truth. And when we take them into the bigger truth, they really kind of lose their power over us. And, and that's what this this chapter of this book is about. It's an amazing little book. So I'm, I'm rambling now. I will invite you ladies to share your thoughts. What do you think? I love it. Um, I am really intrigued again. I think I said that the first time we talked about this book, but I, this word high watch, these two words, high watch have been coming up frequently lately and someone said that they were keeping the high watch for me and I'm just like what did I do wrong <laughs> you 
you know what I mean? But I didn't see it as you just spoke it. I, I could, because it was unfamiliar to me, I only went to the references that I know, which is of course the, the internet to see what people, how people used it and what it meant. And it didn't quite resonate until you said it just now. Um, although I find some of the stuff that they, the way they write from, from the, that hundred plus years ago, sometimes very taxing to, um, to word by word. When I can grasp the meaning of what they're saying, I feel like it's just huge ahas. Um, there is so much gold and silver and treasures in, in the words that they say. And she sounds like a, 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 another one that's just um, amazing here. And, you know, I used to, when you talk about the, the thoughts, I used to think that if I prayed enough and if I was good enough, and if I did every, I'll put all my little ducks in a row, that I all the thoughts would stop. All the the, the just things that just spring up out of nowhere, like you said, right? It's like I'll be driving down the road and I'll see a car that reminds me of something that happened 20 years ago. And boom, all of a sudden I'm caught in this thought. And I'm thinking, well, what did, didn't I start with prayer this morning? Didn't I, you know, didn't I? And, and, I, and I used to think that, oh, it's, I must be doing something wrong here for these things to happen. These are neurons in the brain. They're just memories that unfold. It's not, I'm not emotionally attached to that. I mean, I don't sit there and go, oh no, that will happen to me. And I, and I start feeling bad about it. You know, it's a thought that jumped in and I went, so what do I do with it? What do I do with it? And for the most part, I just say, thank you, God, and let it go. You know, so it is, like I said, I felt like it was somehow a flaw in me and that everybody else understood that once you're all spiritual, you won't have these thoughts or these be ambushed by something anymore. And it's not true. You know, things just come up and our, this is part of our lesson here. I believe it's part of my lesson here, I should say, on earth is to to not to say those things that never happened, but to be real about when they do happen and take appropriate action if need be. If it's something that overwhelms me, then there's some, then there's a trigger I need to look at or an opportunity to heal something that has not yet been healed. Because I'm not going to tell anybody out there or any one of you that I am healed with the ED. It's I am healing. And I will be healing the day that I transition to my new life. You know what I mean? I am in process all the time. So it's an opportunity. It could be an opportunity to be healed, or it could be just a thought. And it's okay to say, well, there you go. You know, that, that it's not serving a purpose. Just let it go. And it can leave, guess what? Just as easily as it came, <laughs> you know? So it's, it's, I, for the longest time I got stuck in that. And I'm so grateful that with the work that, that I'm willing to continue to work on myself, that I got through to the part where I know that ambush or not, if it, if it points to something really deep that I need to work on, then I can heal it. If not, I can just bless it and let it go. And thank you God for that knowledge because I didn't have that 15, 20 years ago. Even though I had been in unity for a while, I was still working so deeply on that. So thank you for the topic. It was wonderful. And thank you for letting me share. Didn't take too much time. <laughs> All right, I'll jump in here. I think the two of you have covered covered it so completely that I'm not sure uh, what all I can add to this. But I did like the what Linda said is it's stored away uh, air thought until we're willing to redeem and build something new out of it. And air thinking is not a lack on ourselves, is what do we do with it, okay? So, you know, um, and I, I have, for me, uh, certain things are just very sensitive and I, can choose to look at them and uh, and go back and self-identify, oh God, I know what that feels like. Or I can choose to bless that situation and say, this is not yours, Kathy, you know, let it go. Um, recently, I was uh, taking my ex 
homeless friend down in a truck and to where he's moving to and this whole street on Imperial Avenue, the whole street was homeless people. And, it, and they all had tents and whatnot. And it just, I was like, ah, oh, and he's like, yeah, that's where I used to be. Uh, but I had a really hard time with it. I couldn't shake it. I kept thinking about how did they get there, you know, and where's their mom and where, you know, where's their family and, and who's going to take care of their children. And it got so wrapped up in it. And I finally just had to say, you know, it's not that it's happening is how are my, how are you Kathy handling it? And I just had to release it and say, you know, we're all where we're supposed to be in this life. And if that's where they are right now, I can hope and pray that they had to go through this in order to come out the other side and, and find a better way of life. But uh, I think that's what I got from this lesson. It's not the air of thought. It's what am I going to do with it? And the same thing goes with uh, when I see a child being abused. Um, I had a woman who would just her baby was just crying and was at the at the market and he was begging her like please look at me look at me and she refused to look at him I was livid and I'm looking at the the clerk and he said yeah this is what we have to put up with all the time and I followed her out to her car and I don't know what I thought I was going to do but I just stood there like this you know and she just picked him up and put him in his car seat and never did talk to him. And, and, and I still to this day remember that. I needed to release it back then, and, but I couldn't help myself. So what did I do with it? Now, I could have gone over and punched her, or I could have called the police, didn't do that. But in my own way, I was showing her that you're a bad mom. So uh, that's what I'd like to add to this conversation. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything else they want to add? No? Okay, so then let me have the honor of praying us out. <sighs> Father, Mother, God, we thank you so much for this topic. And we thank you for the understanding that we are all in progress. We're learning. We're growing. We're finding our higher watch. We're all here for each other and for all the listeners to know that we are a work in progress as they are and that it's okay. And that if it's something that comes up that needs to be healed, you will help us heal it. You will. The Christ in us will help us heal. And for that, we are so grateful. We're grateful for the time and the talents and everything. And everyone that's listening, we're grateful for them too. So we thank you for all of this and more, God. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, my ladies, my lovely ladies here. If you would like to leave us a comment, like, subscribe, join us, uh, leave us a topic you'd like us to talk about, whatever it is. We are so grateful that you were here with us today. And share this with somebody else that you might think could use a little inspiration or, or maybe it'll just provoke a conversation between the two of you. That would be great. How about that? All right. You have a great day and join us tomorrow for something completely different. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook, search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos and leave comments, which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.